Hey, hey. We are, we are live. Yes, sir, Bob. We're live. Live this end the pond. across mm -hmm. the pond in the US. Yes, sir. Um, thanks for tuning in. I am Patriot. I'm with um, Donald Kent. We hosting the Patriotic Art Live. Mm -hmm. How are you doing, Donald? I'm good. We're today. We're this is our first time doing it on a Monday. Uh, we usually yes. do this on Tuesdays. My schedule's changed a bit, so we're just rolling with the punches here, gang. Uh, we, we're exactly. going to be doing a, a catch-up stream. We get we we do a lot of art on these streams on different themes. And, uh -huh. you know, sometimes during the week, you don't have time to catch up and finish up on, on the piece you started. So we're going to get back to doing that with some pieces and, and kind of make sure that we finish what we start. Uh, I'm looking to publish all these in my next uh, next cool. edition of um, Imperium Art. Uh, if you guys go to kent-art.weebly.com, you can see... My book is there. It's up on Amazon. If you'd like to catch uh, my art and poetry, you can own some of it yourself. Um, so how are you there over there in, in uh, merry old England? What's, or no, you're not in England, actually. You're, <laughs> Currently you're, not. You're, I am from England, obviously. But yeah. I'm enjoying the uh, the hot spring of Romania right now. Um, oh, God, so, I yeah. To Romania. Uh, yeah, it's mm. it's to be honest, it's been, it's quite a nice, a lovely season. To be honest, I've been That's seen long. through the winter now, and um, we're heading back in August. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. spring is a lovely time of year around here, especially near the Danube River. Some beautiful sunsets. Uh, so I, you know, I can't really complain. But uh, yeah. let's just introduce the uh, the, the general uh, runnings of this uh, this stream today. Uh, yep. So we're revisiting old work um, from last week, actually, uh, the Help a Brother Out, which we'll touch on a little bit towards the end of the stream and the general incentive for this work that we're finalizing. But it's just a drawing um, and a jam sesh and chats. And we've got some topical chats that we put out to the community today. And uh, at the top, almost uh, quite close, uh, but we've got nationalist coping. We've got AI revolution. We've got free speech laws. And the Sydney church attack, as suggested uh, after the poll, but I think it's a very, very topical thing to talk about. And uh, we will kind of fit, fit that in at the end there. Mm. So, um, yeah, let's let's jam and draw and chat and uh, and, mm. and just do our usual spiel and, and uh, yeah, motor mouse, you know. So Nash is coping. I mean, when <laughs> when I just mentioned it to you, I was like, <laughs> I, I thought when I set the topic that it's like how to cope as a nationalist. <laughs> <laughs> it's clearly not that is it okay. uh, yeah. so how, how would you um all right. define nationalist coping all right so um our dear friend uh patriarch was not aware of the usage of and i maybe this is more of an american slang or, or something but like i'll give you an example if we, we say like oh thinking that trump is if he gets elected it's going to fix everything is just a cope you know, we always say like, mm -hmm. you know, oh, you know, he's I'm on the copium, you know, I'm I'm meaning like I'm 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 kind of lying to myself about a certain situation in politics that, you know, you, you want it to get fixed. You want it to go right. But, yeah. you know, we all know that that things are rigged and blah, blah, blah. We, we all know this, this the deal. So that you know we, we we use the term that's a cope you know but that yeah, is yeah. not that's not what patriarch meant <laughs> when he no, wrote but, that but, down you know since people voted on that uh, i'm assuming that they want to talk about you know mm -hmm. uh that that, that uh, definition so i'm i'm more than happy yeah. to to okay. discuss it and uh since it's yeah. It's 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 uh, prominent within national circles, and it got voted. Sure. And I'm keen to really delve in sure. a bit more and uh, sure, sure. wisen myself up to it. Mm -hmm. um, so, with nationalist coping, why why do you think it occurs? Why uh, do you think people gravitate to thinking, "Oh, this is our guy. This is it." Yeah. So I think there's. I, I just want to add that we can take both approaches. We can talk about how we do kind of you know, in, imbibe in the copium and, and maybe lie to ourselves or something. But also there's actual real coping tech, you know, like psychological coping that we have to do in this sphere more so mm -hmm. than not just that, even just things like 
watching, uh, I don't know, seeing that you're not doxxed or using platforms that are safe from uh, blah, blah, blah. You know, there's, there's, mm-hmm. there's a, we're under attack all the time. And so there's a lot that you kind of have to know. I, I was naive about that stuff. I got burned in, in the past and a lot of people do. Yeah, yeah. But to get back to the theme you just set up, um, a, a term, a phrase that I hear often is that we're looking for a savior. Uh, yes, my good, my, my good, good friend, Flash Gorgon, who's a great uh, meme artist in our sphere. He, he says that often. And I, uh, my, my, uh, savior complex kicks in right away when he does, that, you know, uh, like, Oh, I'm, I'm your, I'll, I'm your guy. I'll do it. You know? Um, uh, uh-huh. And I mean, maybe maybe some of us do have that, and you know, it could be just a, a kind of an, a narcissism of, of sorts. But anyway. I think uh, I think it's quite natural, though, isn't it, to to want that because oh God, yeah. most oh, people yeah. aren't natural born leaders, and mm-hmm. so most people are generally sheep and better off as a collective, and just need yeah. someone to follow or to believe in. Well, I think part of it is is the sense of powerlessness and hopelessness that most people have. They mm. they they feel like that they need a miracle of some kind. They need some kind of exceptional quote savior type to come along, grab the reins. Someone who's got the talent. Someone who's got the moxie. Someone who's mm-hmm. got the intelligence. Someone who knows how to speak to crowds. Uh, knows how to present him or herself. Da da da. I, I, uh, you get the general, the, yeah, 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 the, yeah. the gist of it. Um, and, and you can see, you know, some people do have those traits, those qualities, and we tend to rally around them. I think it's pretty natural. Uh, I'd say before Richard Spencer went off the, the reservation, he had a lot of those traits and you uh-huh. know, a ton of people, including myself were really, you know, just like kind of you know, really, really supporting him. I, I made sure I saw like every single speech they ever did, every single really? interview. I mean, I, I, uh, same for people like uh, Jared Taylor. Uh-huh. And then, you know, later I, I started, I discovered like um, Joel Davis and of course, um, Mark Collette and Australian guy. Yeah. I've uh, seen him yeah. talk actually. Yeah. He's he, pretty, he's, uh, outspoken pretty on point. Is, is, yeah. Outspoken is, is an understatement. Um, uh-huh. he's very controversial, uh, in that he doesn't hide anything. He thinks that like open racism is a good thing. And, and, oh, really? uh, I mean, here's the point though, like racism from our enemies towards us is wide open and protected by law. Therefore you see the context you see, like, uh-huh. I mean, uh-huh. the, I think a lot of us are not sort of like, yeah, let's be openly racist. That's just kind of, you know, we're, we're privately, but not openly, you know. And well, the, it depends yeah. how you define because the, the, the terms racism, like yeah. to the uh, to the status quo everyday person now as mm-hmm. dubbed by, you know, the definition of media, what is racist? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yeah, most of us would be branded that. But I, I you know, I, I don't. uh I, I wouldn't say that uh, that constitutes as racism. To have in-group preference, for example, no, you're, uh, okay, some people we're, would we're, say is racist. What you're talking about is race realism. So yeah, like yeah, dropping yeah. the N-bomb and saying, you know, gas the the small hats and like that stuff that calls for violence, I, I would define as racism. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think I think that, that are, for me is right. is something which is uh, kind of unnecessary. It's not good for the movement, it, you know. It, it's it's not good for your general psychological health, and uh, but granted, at the same time, it's like a pressure valve that lets off a lot of the pain and suffering that we go uh-huh. through. And I, I, I mean, yeah, people are angry, aren't they? Here's the thing: is like people who are racist against whites don't get to tell me not to be racist. And I'm not, a, I don't, I'm not like a yay racism guy, you know, I'm not like waving the flag, like, yay, let's all be right, you know. But I also think that racism is the default setting of humanity. Like, if you, you go to Asia, that that's not a historic, cultural, political, legal part of the context of their cultures. They're openly racist over there. But to, mm. for in their case, a lot of it is just sort of ignorance. It's just, you know, I've never met 
someone like you, you all look the same, you know, on blah, 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 whatever. But, you know, noticing patterns and doing things that protect yourself and, you know, blah, 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 blah. that's race realism. Yeah. And we need to be extremely... Well, that's the, that's the thing, though, isn't it? Race realism is, uh, is clearly been attacked mm -hmm. and you're, you know, yeah. you're not allowed to... Um, right, 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 right. You're not allowed to. Uh, they, they're kind of looking to uh, uh, dismantle that mm -hmm. innate desire, and most people have been yeah. kind of dismantled on or disarmed mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. their, their natural tendencies. Sure. Sure. Uh, obviously, because they otherwise wouldn't be able to um, yeah. propagate uh, globalism yes. in uh, in how they intend it to to pan out. Right. Anything that whites do to defend themselves is defined as racism by our enemies. So quoting FBI statistics or, or like, you know, or laws, CRT, da, 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 and any of that stuff, they're, they're just going to label it that to shut you up. It's a silencing uh, technique. So mm -hmm. we, we all need, I, I should hope by now that everybody has transcended that. I think that's kind of like kindergarten level stuff. We, we have to not care about that, not get caught into the trap of that. Don't let it control yeah. you. Yeah. And the more sort of, or how do I say, like the, the less you, you are triggered by that, the more powerful you are, you project strength up to other whites and you stop non anti whites from from like uh, abusing you. Yeah, so true. It, it, it's an absolute necessity that by now our people are savvy enough to know how to navigate that stuff. So mm -hmm. it's an important conversation. I, I, I think that the quote normies are no, nowhere near that yet. They don't get that. You know, it, that's the difference between us and them in terms of a culture and a movement. Um, yeah. And we need to train them. We need to be the example of it. I, I'll say, speaking for myself, I've had countless, countless times online where I've done precisely that. And I just simply came into the conversation with facts. And then the usual, you know, goofballs would come out and attack me. And then I just very calmly kind of say, OK, you know, insults are not arguments. What do you mm -hmm. got? You know, what do you got? What do you got? What do you got? And like nothing. Oh, OK. Well, I guess everybody, you know, the, the 500 people following this thread all see that I'm right. And not only that, they mm -hmm. they they they're liking what I'm saying. <laughs> so that's yeah. their kind of passive, soft way of saying I agree with you. I just don't have either the courage and or the, the words to sort of to be a part of this kind of conversation. Sure, sure. So, so uh so yeah coping then so who would you say is the biggest cope right now uh, i mean what's the biggest coping? um i mean i mean I, mm. I think about it from a from the perspective of the us and the states and then also maybe yeah. i try and think about who the biggest cope well like i say one of the copes in the uk is i don't know too much about them is the um is the who was that oh who was it why did my mind always go blank recently? <laughs> only on the show, right? You know, yeah, always, always. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I know the words. It's just there. Yeah. Right. Just is something. Yeah. Is, is it <laughs> UK? UK politics? Yeah, yes. Yeah, UK. Okay. UK. Well, where right. am I going? It's they, they recently just let off um, two guys because Hope Not Hate uh, brought oh. to attention oh. two okay. candidates, uh, some chats that they'd stated in the past. Okay. And um, let me just quickly scan uh, Mark's mm -hmm. stream because uh, he will uh, have it on there. Mm -hmm. And um, who was it? These are Someone politicians said. that got off or something? Is this? No, uh, candidates that were. What's, let the, what's off. the whole? Uh, what's the whole? Uh, they, they were kind of dropped because oh. Hope Not Hey, who are like some funded organization which really kind of goes after the yeah we old. we have that as well that that could tie into the trump uh plan to create a civil rights cause for whites to, to create uh rights civil rights for white people that that that's just a segue when you're when you're done there you okay yeah oh sorry reform that would say reform okay 
Reform, it's a uh, political party here in the U UK, and they cooked and uh, booted candidates for hope, um, for hope not hate, basically, hope not hate, a sort of far left Marxist organization uh, right. that really try and um, just expose, um, you know, people on the sort of dissident right, alt right type circles, or mm -hmm. anyone that's anyone that's right of them, really, they'll attack. Of course. Um, but yeah, there were some candidates that they they sought to um, go after because of their more right wing views. Right. And um, and this group reform basically, uh, you know, took the knee and and uh, got rid of them, whether they wanted to make sure that their image was squeaky clean or not. I don't know. But the mm. point is uh, why I'm talking about them is that they might be perceived as some form of cope in the uk here um and when they're doing antics like that um you know taking the knee and cowtailing and even mm. if the what these people said in their twitter feeds were uh i think they were generally rooted in truth um okay. i'm not too sure exactly what they said but mm. uh i don't think it was anything that was uh really uh too mm. extreme at all okay. Okay. um but yeah, they they uh, got rid of them. So it's, mm -hmm. I mean, to me, is how, you know, if if you're gonna say uh, people are looking at them like these are our guys to make some real change, how much change yeah. are they gonna make if they're so concerned about mm -hmm. not defending the truth and cowtailing yeah. to these uh, far left organizations? So the the fulcrum of truth and liberty and honesty integrity in politics is to is the ability to stand up for whites that mm -hmm. is the very very fulcrum because we all know that as soon as you do that that you're canceled right away and so mm -hmm. that that is the boundary of freedom right there in very clear lines so like you know anybody who like that's why i'm pretty amazed to hear trump say he wants to create uh, rights for white people um, so I don't know. I mean, I think it's a cope in the negative sense to think that you can trust your leaders if they're not doing that, you know, if, if somehow yeah. they're, they're getting paid by the small hats and, or, you know, kind of, you know, double dealing or something or other that you can t kind of tell by the way that they vote, um, that they're not really our guy. Okay. Who's the, the new president of Argentina? for when he came out we were all like oh this guy's based ha 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 you know afuera all this stuff and it was the big funny joke for a while and then sure enough you know a couple of weeks in he's got a little tiny hat on and he's converting to judaism you know yeah i think he was like that for a while though wasn't he i think he had a soft spot for faith but that's, that's the thing though how can yeah. you know it's most people don't really understand about um Mm -hmm. I don't want to digress the topic too much, but the yep. whole notion of converting to Judaism, I mean, it's it's clearly a religion first and an ethnicity second, but they'll just switch it as and when they want to, uh, it seems. And um, mm -hmm. I don't think people tr truly understand. But yeah, I, I don't want to get into religious debate uh, today. Sure. Um, so what else was there? Uh, yeah, Copes. Who else would you cope? I mean, what's his name? DeSantos, is he? Uh, oh, past, good a bit one. Of a cope? Good one. Very, very good example. Um, wow. Okay. So a couple things in the context of that. So in America, Florida and Texas are two states that stand out as being these like major quote freedom states, you know, <laughs> like uh -huh. freedom fries, you know, and, and like yeah. you, you, you'd think that like if you're like a libertarian or something and you're, you know, you can, uh, go fishing and shoot your guns and, you know, drink beer and blah, 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 blah. It's just this kind of like, you know, it's a notion that people generally believe they have better sort of lower taxes and yada, yada, yada. And then uh, DeSantos came out against uh, all this left wokeism, et cetera, et cetera. And mm -hmm. I would say that it was generally like a pre-election, how do I call it? It's like, when these people know they're going up for election well ahead of time, they'll start doing political stunts 
to start so it's building, just a, building. They start a PR campaign early, basically. Yeah, yeah, PR campaign. You can uh, call it that. So, so you know, by being so outstanding and like I, I don't know, there was something he did against uh, Walt Disney Corporation. It just it was, it was just so outspoken that everybody thought like, holy shit, Trump actually has competition now. This guy is really kicking butt, and like everybody loved him. Yada yada. And then as soon as the Israel thing came out, oh, so there were yeah. um, the Def- Goyim Defense League was like dropping flyers on people's lawns. It got on the news. The next thing you know, the ADL is all over it. And there are re- essentially they Florida created some kind of law where you can't criticize Israel. <laughs> Imagine making a freaking law about that, you know. And as soon as that happened and DeSantis was all behind it, we all were like, oh, shoot, we, it, it happened again. You know, like we were we were mm. tricked. We were tricked again. You know, here comes the new boss, same as the old boss, you know. Um, and uh, yeah. Yeah. So he he's done like he's done. Like okay. anybody who's so, still anyone who still sort of believes in him is just like a kind of a normie republicard who who doesn't really know what's going on in politics and <laughs> you know this the kind of libertarian civic nationalist mentality of like just leave me alone and let me do whatever i want and i'll 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 vote for you kind of thing and it, it we we know now that that's not that's not the right way that's not healthy that's not plugged into your people and being a part of a people and Western civilization and all these other things. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, uh, Interesting. There you go. So that's my, my little story. Yeah. I can't, I can't think of mayor to any, too many other, uh, copes other than, I mean, the, you know, the, uh, initially to what well, actually there are, um, there are a number of copes. Of course there's loads. There's always been many empty promises. Um, mm. Mm. I mean, Boris Johnson was a cope. I remember them years ago uh, yeah, when he was too, like, there's yeah. only one. There was this one guy and he's clearly conservative type, bit of a lad. And he's like, there's only one Boris Johnson. He's going <laughs> to, you know, he's going to get it done. Um, and he was going to lead Brexit. And obviously, you know, it, nothing changed well, whatsoever. What, what's the Brexit with- was about uh, having control over migration, first and foremost. Yeah. And the only re- the main reason for leaving Europe was really not 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 much to do with trade at yeah. all. It, it was more about um, getting uh, power of our of, of the laws, the law structure, which mm. so so you know we didn't have to uh, our tail to these migration laws and things, and so we could take our borders uh, back and and mm-hmm. that and sure. there was a massive focus on the the trade element of it, but. Why would we? Why would we have to go through Europe to do a trade deals? Why not go to the nation directly? You yeah, know, that's 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 what yeah. most. Uh, it, it just goes to show the power of of the European Union and what it mm-hmm. establishes. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like linked to the the world, um, the United Nations, who really yeah, are just sort of the global global uh, globalist yeah. communism association. You, you, that's you really what they are. Adam. You took the words right out of my mouth. It, it's just the new packaging for communism. That's all, you know. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. And that's that's what I'm thinking. These these communists think they're so you know like these communist tools um, <laughs> that think they're they're the useful idiots that uh, the oh, yeah. communists spoke about really, and the the yeah, uh, yeah. Freemasons uh, like Carl, mm-hmm. um, what's his name. Uh, Albert Pike spoke about the useful idiots that they'll mm-hmm. use the nihilists, yeah. you know that uh, that they'll use in order to 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 propagate this uh, doctrine, and they think they're doing some mm-hmm. revolutionary act and they're against the system. Yeah. Yet they're just tools, absolute tools, totally, totally. which don't stand for truth. Um, they, you know, they just so, lap up the lies and the misery because they uh, have a disdain for their own lives and circumstances. I think one hundred percent. Yeah, it's it's disturbing. That that goes into another rabbit hole about, you know, how do people get like that? Like, what's wrong with these people that they yeah. are, that they hate their their nation and their culture so much that they would be just like celebrating and supporting, defending the the death of of their countries? It's well, I think most of them, you know, like when you go to these um, environment sort of. Um, 
a lot of them tend to be middle class type rich kids as well. They, well, there's a mix. You probably got some fringe working class, but a lot of them tend to be quite well off, and and you know their their parents didn't give them enough attention or something, and mm. uh, and they associate capitalism with their parents and money grabbing and stuff. And yeah, and I yeah. think they build up a kind of a loathe and um, a hatred for them that way. And that, that I think that's one way. Mm -hmm. And then the other way is the disenfranchised peoples, which um, uh, just don't have much going on in their lives. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, they they hate that other people are, are being more successful. And mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it's, I think there's a number of things, but oh yeah, there, there's yeah, some it's... things that stand out to me anyway. I think it's a, it's kind of an old, topic in our sphere you know we've, yeah. we've covered that a bit in uh just the past in general you know amongst yeah, ourselves yeah. but uh it I, I, i'm a little more concerned about like figuring out the psychological profile of conservatives today um and trying to work with them um uh -huh. i had a conversation with an elderly woman recently i'd say she's like in her 70s a very very uh devout christian like you know super into the bible and things and okay. i don't know how it came up but somehow the 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 war with uh israel came up uh -huh. and i the way that i reacted demonstrated that i you know i didn't say anything explicitly but i was like clearly not for israel <laughs> in the conversation uh -huh. yeah yeah and and she was she's like you know my son says israel's the bad guy too like what's the can you explain it to me and i'm like really really cautiously trying not to sort of shatter her worldview and like uh -huh. offend her and i don't want to get in a fight or da, 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 you know i'm i'm just very cautiously navigating this i just happen to have a uh like a meme in my on my phone where there were quotes in the bible from when jesus said things like the synagogue of satan and you okay. know your, your father the devil and these things and they had the exact uh i don't know what they're called they're the numbers in the bible that tell you where things are the chapters or something or the anyway okay. so i told her you know look up you know uh you know revelations da, 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 nine three five i don't know what the number and she, and she like vigorously <laughs> <laughs> angrily got her bible out and you know, looked it up and then yeah and you're like you know jesus said those things and then i said what you need to do is try to understand that there's israel of the bible and then there's the political state israel and she, right there she was like ah i get it yeah, so yeah, like, yeah okay these are real people and they're politicians so what what do politicians do <laughs> they lie <laughs> they cheat they hurt people they're sociopaths you know like it, it all fell into place okay so yeah. you know for whoever's out there listening to this like that's that's probably a good strategy is to kind of maybe be yeah to, i think uh, zionism and um is right. distinctly different i mean you do have um some uh actual orthodox jews which aren't zionists themselves and feel like it's contrary to their beliefs Sure. Um, so yeah, I mean, not everyone can be tarred with the same brush. Um, no, no. And, and you have sort of left-wing radicalized Jews, which are sort of awful migration and things like that. And then yeah. you have, um, well, do you have many right-wing Jews? I don't know. Uh, I, I, it's complex. Many, many non-religious Jews tend to be left-wing and atheist, actually. Yes. Yes. Um, and then generally, if there are sort of right-wing uh, Jews, and they tend to be very ethnocentric towards, um, you know, their 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 own um, kind of yeah, people. Yeah, naturally, yeah. So uh, one, I, I, I don't remember who I was listening to. It was a, a, a sort of a, a pro-white Jewish speaker. It's one of the millions of videos that I watch every day. And he was saying something to the effect of, you know, Jews grow up under extreme propaganda, believing that like everybody wants to murder them, genocide them, kill them. 
that's essentially their identity that you know a lot of their holidays are are remembering times when their people were slaughtered you know it's just it's just really pile drived into their minds and their hearts and so mm. if your whole if, if like your whole identity was the world hates and wants to kill me <laughs> then like what would you be what would you do you would you would probably you know hate everybody and want to enslave them uh, you know and you, you see kind of where i'm going with it so you know what i'm not sort of ex making excuses for that but at the same time i think it's good to have a psychological understanding of it you know what I'm yeah saying? yeah i see what yeah. you're saying yeah interesting so let's get back to some of the talking points um okay. so i think we've touched a fair bit on nationalist coping um, as he corrected me with the <laughs> traditional uh, sort of more um, memed uh, expression of the term. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's discuss AI revolution. Um, okay. So I've had a, a number of conversations with different people about this. Uh, some people mm -hmm. really don't like it, uh, are scared <laughs> okay. that yeah. AI is, um, is taking yeah. over. I know uh, yeah. I've had a conversation with Mark as well about this. And uh, you know, I, and they are, uh, and and most people with opinions on it tend tend to be valid. They're valid concerns. Yeah. Um, I can only come at it from a creative uh, myself, and my experience mm. of it so far is that I personally feel uh, I recognise the dangers, and yeah. but I also feel very empowered by it, as it were, as you know, as a tool. Like, hmm. I I tend to like for example, um, you know I I've always had big ideas to create stuff, whether it's a comic book, yeah. um, whether it's a, a series of poems and uh, sagas and stories and uh, yeah. things like that. I'm, I'm just like I, I, I've I've always I've always had this, and but I've never had enough time to do it, and it's like. I know that now if I if I if I was to say okay if I put dedicated like just a few weeks of my time mm. I could churn out like a full comic and actually shelf it and be like yeah. wow I, is am I, I'm actually realizing it yeah if you, you know have, I've got the script I've got job. the direction I've got the yeah. whole um narrative um right. panned out in my mind and mm -hmm. I, I to be honest if you've got a message and a story to tell yeah you, it can be a tool, this is my perspective, it can be a tool that you use mm -hmm. for good, to spread your message, no. to spread your politics, to spread your beliefs, to get them yeah. hurt. Yeah. Like, yeah, in the, in the, in the more distant future. Like, we, I, th I think AI will take us to the point where, as an individual, you could be creating your very own a feature film with high-level yeah. CGI. I mean, that's how empowered you could be with it. Yes, yeah, I, and, you're very right. You're very right. And why why not? Like if I think the difference, the key differences are gonna be is how good are your stories, how compelling mm. are they? Yeah. Um, and what you know, what have you got to say? Mm -hmm. Um and what you know, how are you gonna um leave a mark? How are you gonna tell your story? How are you gonna get your voice out there? And and like I say, mm. my personal experience is that I feel like it's possible for me now to to, to do a lot of these uh yeah. Yeah. manifest these ideas into the world mm -hmm. so how about yourself what's your thoughts i'm so glad that you said all those things because they kind of laid the ground for, groundwork for what i want to say actually okay um it's, it's quite amazing how you and i are like on the same wavelength you know in terms of our thinking um yeah so i'm you know, I, I'm as a comic book illustrator, I'm, I'm what I call a, a frustrated filmmaker, you know, like I don't I, I do the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. writing, the directing, the acting, the, the choreography, the set design, the costume design on and on and on, you know, the, pace, uh -huh. the camera work, the lighting, you know. Um, so you're more like a I, creative director as well. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. you're a composer. Yeah. Yeah. So. You know, seeing the the way AI is going with film specifically, in in I don't know how many years from now I'll be able to create a feature film 
of anything I can think of. And then before you know uh, what, what's going to happen is that, see, Hollywood is always going to, they're, they're already like 20 years ahead of us on all this stuff. They'll monopolize things and blah, blah, blah. But I think when, when this does actually get into the public's hands, then it's going to revolutionize everything in terms that we will have more narrative control of ourselves uh -huh. now there's probably going to be trouble finding platforms that will show our films or tv shows or whatever the things are that we make however there there's going to be like if if the you know who's can't control hollywood and everybody is hollywood through cgi do you see how radical that could be how wonderful mm -hmm. that could be for us that could be a, a, a gigantic boon you know, an enormous blessing. So while there are obviously, you know, serious concerns and for example, um, I, I can't remember which actor it was, but he was saying something to the effect that um, Hollywood wants to bring back dead actors with, you know, like CGI and mm -hmm. put them into films. And like the, 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 what, what do you call the like actors guild is like, totally against that they don't want their likeness to be brought back from the dead when they're gone you know and used without their permission which has happened a little bit here and there like uh there's that one british actor who came that brought him back for star wars uh you know he passed away uh grand toff markin or something grand mark blah, blah. can't say the name oh but um anyway. i mean fast and the furious no, no, no. Uh, Star Wars. In the very first Star Wars, there was one of the leaders who he was Darth Vader's boss. He's like, you know, you know, whatever. Oh, don't choke that guy, Darth Vader. I, I, I forget. He's a very okay. famous uh, British actor. He does a lot of horror. Uh, Grand Moff Tarkin. That's the name of the character that he plays. Well, they had a CGI version of him. Like, really? Does the estate agree to that? How does that work? You know what I'm saying? I mean, he he passed away years ago. So anyway, uh, this is kind of an interesting subject, but how it concerns us is that our our guys, our creators, will have a lot of power. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I one thing I'm trying to an idea I'm trying to sort of put out there is that we need our own TV channels. We need uh, mm -hmm. we really should have, and there's there's kind of ways to do that now. There are, I don't know, the I, I don't have all the details on that topic but like you could conceivably make a tv channel now i've granted you'd have to have money you know <laughs> to you know do production on such a thing you know like what are you what are you going to do but if you can create um cgi not cgi like ai movies and such then you could basically run a whole tv show by yourself you know, if you're, you're well, I, I think that's where it's going, isn't it? To me, yeah, and yeah. from my experience, and I know, I, I also know that people are getting um, brushed aside in, in some ways. Like, there's a lot of artists which are getting overlooked now because the level of production is, uh, you know, some some concept artists, for example, aren't need aren't aren't needed as much. Um, so there's been massive cuts. It's like they don't mm -hmm. need that many people to do a certain amount of jobs. So mm -hmm. it's almost like, you know, you're going to get left behind if you don't embrace this technology and maximize mm -hmm. your productivity along with it, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so I, I think that, you know, there's, there's no other choice. I think people have to find other ways of, yeah. Um, yeah. of uh, utilizing their creativity. I mean, why not go mm -hmm. into being a fine artist? I think there will be a surge in that market as well, yes. being yes. with yes. traditional yes. art, because sure. obviously everyone's flooding to digital and AI, and people are going to be loving seeing the you know the gestural brushstrokes of an artist in in real life and their soul come about, you know, like just through their own personal mm -hmm. stylization and personality. Sure. Um, sure. But yeah, I don't know. Like I say, I. I feel empowered by it. Like there was an old poem I dug up, um, mm. and I'm I've been working on a music video for it. And wow. so far, I've I've spent I would say about nine hours. I spent four hours doing mm -hmm. a song. Had a little test. Someone, um, a guy in our chat in our in our community linked this mm -hmm. AI music maker. And again, yeah. I feel bad yeah. that certain artists feel like they are being, um, mm -hmm. you know 
some people can at the, it, a few clicks generate a certain sound right, that right. has something to it. Yeah. But imagine a trained artist utilizing this technology, course, how much course. better it could be, or they Huge. could be, how yeah. they could get a whole album done with their yeah. creative ability. Because I tell you what, mm -hmm. it do, anyone can't just use these tools. You need to have a creative mind. Hello. You need to have vision. You nailed it. And, and you know, you're still going to see the separation between those that aren't creative and those that are. So if you are creative, I would say don't fear AI, uh, the, yeah. the tools. Use it because it's going right. to be used against you otherwise. So embrace it to be able to <laughs> empower yourself to deliver yeah. the message that you want people to hear. I mean, mm -hmm. until until this until a, an AI, a, a, um, you know, computers can be as creative as humans, which I don't think they ever will be. They mm -hmm. they're not sentient. They are just an advanced, super advanced calculator that for now. can. Um, <laughs> yeah, for now, uh, I don't believe they'll be yeah. truly no. sentient as a human. I think humans are very. Will always be distinct. Is can AI I computers on, are are made in our image, so they're always going to be capped. Can I segue? On yeah, go for it. Go because for it. it, it yeah, yeah. It really, one of the biggest issues in the AI question is transhumanism. And mm -hmm. so I, I presume our audience is savvy and they know what trends, you know, the merging of humanity with machines. And yeah, yeah. so, so, you know, the way they sell it is like, Hey, wow. Don't you want to be able to ask Siri a question inside your mind <laughs> or just turn on your phone with a thought, you know, wouldn't that be yeah. neat? Oh, Kino. Yeah. You know, and, but actually it goes the other way is that, okay, now uh -huh. that our technology is, is in literally in your freaking brain and uh -huh. you know your your dna etc now we control you remotely and that's yes, actually yes, yes. What, what it is so that that's the real danger isn't right, it i'm i'm just setting it up though so imagine okay. ai combined with human sentience whereby mm -hmm. the computer kind of thinks it's human and or the human thinks it's a computer are we following Yes, that so is that's, uh, that's that, that's like that's a sci-fi so... movie right there. I know, I know, I know. But... <laughs> and and the great thing is you'll be able to make it, Donald. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's be, not funny, but it's... It using AI before it happens. Yeah, I had better get that comic book out like immediately. Yeah, so so it, that I said like that. get it out there as a warning before. Oh God, and, uh, may, maybe some sentient AI will uh, say, "Hey, he's got a point, this Donald." <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna yeah, yeah. Fight against myself. Right. Um, uh, I'm just playing I'll, around. I don't know. I'll be uh, I'll be disappearing before you know it. I'll be su suiciding myself. But <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. No, it's a, it's a good point. It's an interesting thought. Yeah, it's it's actually you know the direction things are going. I feel I, like yeah, you know that that's another kind of cope is to think it'll never happen. Do you understand? Like true. It's, yeah. It's, Speaking it's of all, copes. Yeah, yeah. It's already that ties happened. in nicely, doesn't it? Uh, very much. So yeah, I mean. It is one of those things. It's a fine line. And so maybe it's, it's mm -hmm. alluring and tempting to think that we can create these things quickly, but mm -hmm. yeah. maybe you're right. It is a cope. Maybe I am coping yeah. myself. Well, and <laughs> to, to me, to me, worrying about jobs and stuff is like the, this is like nothing compared to the way transhumanism is going to change humanity. And, it, you know, it's already kind of doing that. Like, I, I hate how everything has to be looked at, like, oh, how's that going to affect the economy? Like, fuck <laughs> the economy, man. What about you? What about your soul? What about humanity? You know? Um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just, I mean, me being a Gnostic, I, I, it's literally just the next phase of enslavement, of soul enslavement, is to mm. make it so that we cannot, we, we can't communicate with god that we're, we're cut off entirely from that that you know to mechanize us in such a way horrifying. yeah no i i, I totally get that and um uh, you know i do have them in mind but i can't help but think that um like i've been i've been working on a lot of different projects in my spare time like i'm the kind that i've always had to be doing something whether yeah. it's writing a comic whether it's writing yeah. a, a research paper on my own beliefs and testing sure, sure. them and stuff sure, sure, and sure. thinking, okay, I've, I've got, um, 
you know, a massive sort of, uh, like I shared a, do a document with you. I don't want to go into details about it, but mm -hmm. I yeah. shared it with you. And, um, you know, it's that's an extensive amount of research and mm -hmm. fundamental proofs proving certain certain fallacy of certain doctrines and things. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. like, OK, um, I would like to share this. I would like to. Um, and, and, you know, when if you embrace certain tools right now, I could be, I could get it done. Uh, 10 times faster than and, and it might not ever you know it might never ever have seen the light of day otherwise um because hmm. you know you've got stuff in mm -hmm. life that comes up and you you know you sure, don't have sure. the time sure so like i say there's a certain level of empowerment to it um uh, yeah yeah big time but there are also dangers but then again you know you can fall on your own sword or you can use it to to fight against other people with it so it's mm -hmm. it, it's a uh, yeah. You know, for for what I, for what I want to do, I AI isn't really there yet. I I tried to find like I downloaded an app and da 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 for coloring my comics because okay, you know, granted it's taking work away from a colorist or whatever, but like color is colorizing colorizing a uh, comic book page is extremely expensive and, and it's time consuming. It's very tedious work. And if there were an AI that could do that for me, hello. So anybody out there making AI, there's an okay, idea. But let's let's say there's a comic book artist that might be replacing him. Yeah, but like well, there's still the some people that don't that that still have certain tasks that they don't really want to do or they don't have mm -hmm. that experience in. Who's to say that that colorist can't take his knowledge of color and use of color theory? Because like sure, I said, sure, is sure. There's a uh, fundamental theoretical knowledge behind art. What colors go mm -hmm. best together? What gravitate? Yeah. What, what grabs people's attention? How does the color aid the flow of narrative? You know, to get, have that emotional um, yeah. sort of roller coaster and rhythm through the right, whole right, right, story. Right, right. The These are things that you know um, a, a, a color artist can say. Okay, now I can be have uh, ten times the output. I can take on more projects. And that's what is expected mm -hmm. of me. I see. I so see. Yeah. They're not necessarily out of work. They're just okay. not moving with the times, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. Well, like to use the tools to be more productive, as you said earlier, is the ideal, you know? Yes. Um, I, I tried to do that. And it, and the, the technology just is not up to it yet. It, it, it's for whatever reason. Uh, okay. Once again, talking about my, my meme artist friend, Flash Gorgon, he's hardcore into ai like he's he spends is he has he embraced it quite a lot then say that again i'm sorry he's, he's embraced it quite a lot is he oh this is what i'm trying to get to is that like he shares his work with me and like the, to watch him sort of torture the 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 software to the point where he can get it to do exactly what he it want what he wants yet get the best out of the sort of the creativity of the software because ai will can come up with some crazy crazy stuff and so it's a combination of you know controlling it and then seeing what you get out of it kind of um it's been yeah. fantastic but like he's got the patience of a saint apparently like i wouldn't be able to sit there for hours and try uh -huh. to change the prompt to say you know whatever it has to say and i'm like dude i i'll just draw it you know i'll just paint it instead <laughs> of doing that you know yeah, um yeah. but we've got some uh We've got some interesting comments in the chats. Uh, have yeah, you got any do. comments in your chats about it? So maybe well, we'll reel off those. A, Let's go through a ton. those. Yeah, um, a ton of, yeah let me, you've probably got loads. So there's only a couple of in my chat. So I'll go along. Eminent Rain says, I think AI is pretty useless for creators with really specific ideas. AI only seems to be able to mash together bits and pieces of the mass uh, of the mass mm -hmm. normie consciousness. It really struggles with mm -hmm. unique ideas. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, I'd agree with that. It still needs a creative composer, um, mm -hmm. you know, and you still need to correct it and be like, you know, train it mm -hmm. and, and uh, go through lots of different iterations. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's so, so it still requires human input. Um, I could yeah. say my, my use, my experience of it so far is that uh, it is pretty stupid <laughs> and it does need <laughs> a creative yeah. composer. Um, yeah. But, I can create 10 times faster and do things that um, 
<clears throat> uh, I'll just say I feel a bit more empowered by it. So um, okay. I'm 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 curious to see where it takes me myself. Uh, mm -hmm. I would like to explore it more and and uh, really get behind doing some projects. Uh, how about mm -hmm. yourself? What's uh, some guys in your chat saying? Okay, so <clears throat> Seven Serpents says, has anyone looked into OI? Organoid intelligence. That's what I'm concerned oh. about. I've never heard that term before. I will have to look it up. Um, oh, I. Yeah, I never even heard of that. I have no idea what that is. So I'll, I'll, I'll have to. Look Sounds it up. like a mix of AI and synthetic biology or something. That's kind of what I'm hearing. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's go back. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. Um, just trying to find something related to what we're talking about. We were talking about Star Wars and all this other stuff. Um, <clears throat> the Abelville Institute channel used some AI tech to create a cool song video called The Devil Forest. It's a good example of uh, how our guys can use it to our advantage. Thank you, Corey Wol Wolke. So that's... So what is it, the Abelville? Do you know what AI they used for that? So that would be very helpful if you could maybe write the name or put the link in the chat, you know, because then our guys can use it, you know, and get on that. So that that brings up another subject is, you know, maybe we should have a dissident right AI chat room of some kind where we can kind of be like, hey, you know, I'd, yeah, and share resources? tools and stuff because yeah, loads like, of tools are coming out. Exactly. There's um, there was a tool uh, someone linked in uh, the Patriot to Gods community. Uh, yeah. What is the uh, the link he sent? I he made a really cool song actually, and and, and I've made one which I'm going to share the music video for next okay. week, oh, uh, cool. based on an old poem I wrote. And uh, mm. yeah, I'm interested. I'm looking forward to releasing that. But um, it's mm. called Bear with Me. Um, I will let me uh, let me dig it out because uh, it is it is uh, pretty useful. Well, I, I really enjoyed it to be honest okay. uh, using right. it. Uh, it's really exciting. Just, I don't want to start making a second song just yet because I know I'll st just start like not doing any other work and I'll just <laughs> yeah, be yeah, like, yeah, yeah. once I start something, I have to finish it or you I know, know you I get the book. I know you. You're obsessed. So. <laughs> Crazy artist. Yeah, I, I kind of gravitate towards uh, really what inspires me most of the time. Um, sure. I will find that link. If you want to read any of your comments from your chat guys yeah. out. Yeah. So uh, Corey goes on to say um, uh, they didn't go into much detail, just brief mention of AI vocals. Hippocratic Oath, my good friend, says, Thou shalt not make a machine in the likeness of a human mind. Orange Catholic Bible Dune Frank Herbert. Hmm. And there are, I forget the Mentats. I forget the name of the species in the book that they're like human computers. Like that's why they exist is because in the history of Dune, uh, they did give AI like sort of, I don't know, sentience or something and they had to kill it. <laughs> wow. Um, okay. That, yeah. I mean, I don't, I'm, I don't know everything about Dune or whatever, but that's that's something that I had come across, and I think that's probably what Hippocratic Oath is uh, referring to in his quote there. Um, yeah, well, the uh, the 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 uh, website is udio dot com u d i o, and it's an AI music uh, making software. UDIO. It's well worth trying out, and like I say, um, I understand how how artists, existing musicians, might feel being so mm -hmm. talented. Uh, yeah. Uh, but just I would say just just think how much you could utilize it and be way better than everyone else, and uh, mm -hmm. and find I, I seriously think that you could find inspiration. It's like if you can hear it in your head and you can yeah. think of a prompt and how and and yeah. start crafting words prompts yeah. Yeah. to execute the sound. We're becoming more like composers through the word, and it's it's almost got it's it's almost like in the beginning was the word, and well, huh. yeah, and it's it's you know mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. I know there's less act of playing an instrument, but mm -hmm. you are composing in your mind how you think it should sound, and then trying to execute that through the word. I think it'll uh, it'll bring up some very uh, complex cultural issues 
because yeah. there will be there'll be like the any Joe Bag of Donuts guy that's making songs and then you know kind of like like these these YouTubers or TikTokers that become multimillionaires because they do like really stupid shit on on those platforms you know like there'd be like mm-hmm. some 12 year old kid that i don't know makes fart noises and then he he <laughs> becomes a millionaire I mean, this is just the world we live in you know and yeah, it's yeah. annoying as shit but like i think there's definitely going to be a lot of that however yeah yeah um so it's gonna it, people will define themselves by discerning tastes you know kind of like something that's very commercial versus something that actually has a unique uh, artistic value to it. So mm-hmm. I think that's yeah. kind of a natural... I mean, it's like meme culture, isn't it? What you culture? Know, um, meme culture. Okay, yeah. It's, yeah. it's sort of, you know, it's, it's definitely sort of post-2010, isn't it? Well, mm-hmm. actually, it started really mm-hmm. since the beginning of the internet. But, yeah. you know, tools have progressively gotten more and more advanced where any Joe is able to um, take images and... Mm-hmm. And uh, and and create something funny or something that you know tells mm-hmm. a story, mm-hmm. um, and so there's a place for it, but it uh, I don't think it really takes too much away from uh, you know what other people yeah. Um, yeah can create. Again, I think it really boils down to quality value, like if it can make you feel something and has some kind of authenticity to it, some kind of artistic integrity, because only songwriters know really what, you know, music theory or melody or how, how to write a song. If, mm-hmm. And and Pete, just like CGI, you remember like when you're watching a movie, you can look at something and say like, as realistic yeah, as yeah. that is, I know it's just CGI. Whereas in, yeah, in the future, yeah. it, it'll be just like that. Like, oh, nobody really wrote this song. It's just a machine. And they'll probably, uh-huh. presumably, just sort of like dismiss it because of that. Like, uh, anybody could do that, you know? Like, a, there's going you know, yeah, to be a time when like, like five-year-olds are doing it, you know, on their on their uh, their laptop or whatever, their, their uh, Android or something. Mm. So... Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, we'll see. But for now, I would say that if you've got a message um, and you've got a story, I would say uh, embrace it while you can um, to get your message out there to to um, to try and influence. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm, I think mm-hmm. for people that have beliefs like we do, generally that you know we, we believe strongly in um, you know loving your own nation and people mm-hmm. uh, first and foremost. Um, you know, opposed to communism and uh sort of the globalist narrative that is mm-hmm. trying to uh destroy our mm-hmm. traditions cultures and ways of life across the globe not not mm-hmm. just um within the west it's, it's yeah. everywhere it's yeah. a, a real toxic um ideology sure. Sure, sure and um you know we should be telling stories we should be uh yeah. I trying agree. to create as much as possible to uh, influence as much as possible as creators mm-hmm. we've mentioned before in podcasts that it's always been the creatives which has helped to shape the culture and um yeah. if if there's people out there that have got uh, are utilizing these tools to uh, uh to to tell their story to tell their version mm-hmm. of events then um you know we're mm-hmm. going to be lagging behind so i, I would say yeah. that increase your productivity in the same way yeah um but be discerning about it you know <laughs> don't start taking no chip in your forehead like to make sure that you can still use the tool it's like that's when you get off <laughs> that's when yeah you, it's time to be like okay i've you know that's a bit yeah. too far maybe it's a rolling mm. uh, rolling the dice i don't know but mm. i would say i've got a few projects that i'd like to uh, get off my chest uh, oh that that's the insanity uh, of it it's like time is the enemy in a way like you don't have enough yeah. time or energy uh like i this is the point is that every artist wants to be a professional artist they just want to do it all day and get rich doing it <laughs> and and yeah in my case mm-hmm. also like to change the world with it as well i'm one of these insane uh, you know there there you go i've got my my savior complex in, in full uh, blast here like i want to save the world with my art you know Mm -hmm. Um, yeah yeah i i've always been like that in the past as well you know yeah yeah. in fact that's some of the reasons why i kind of got back into 
Uh, I think it, it sort it's, of it drives you in many ways, you know, that kind of like yeah, yeah. to have uh, an impact. Uh, let me just say a quick hello to Imminent Rain there. He says, bro, uh -huh. I'll color your comics. <laughs> um, <laughs> if like comic book coloring is a niche in itself whereby you first have to be a pretty good painter in the regard that you must, must, must understand color theory. Color theory is it, it, it imminent, imminent rain would be great at it because he has the music theory background and color theory they're they're just sounds that for your eyes the the scale mm. of of the rainbow or whatever or or like let's say all the levels of tones of like say light green to middle green to dark green you know like there all of that is just music for your eyes and since he has like an extremely strong grasp of of music classical music is is you know and if anybody knows the guy you'll know him, what i'm talking about that could mm -hmm. transfer that could transfer very very well um that would take time you, you, you'd still have to put the time in like the time you did to learn how to shred you would just have to learn <laughs> how to color you know what i'm saying the digital yeah, tools yeah. Are, are fabulous um, and digital coloring isn't just coloring it's making uh lighting effects blurring effects textures you're a, you're a type of a cinematographer when you are a, a comic book colorist it's uh it's a massive job it's a that's why these guys get yeah really it's well. like um yeah. i know you used to follow a lot of concept artists and they do color big keyframes time. and stuff like that big time, big time. and uh some of them were just very good and, they, and it wasn't they didn't really have to worry about too much of the composition although that was part of their skill sets but the storyboard handed that to them and then they take key parts of it and then just play with color. And they was masters of color. They yeah. knew how to guide the eye. They knew how to make yes, it yes, 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 yes. enticing, you know, like a sweet shop. Yeah. It's the, like they, they used color in a way that made you, you could taste it almost. Yes. yes. So like well, the thing to do is to go, uh, I, there must be a name for this, but in the film industry, they have like palettes, you know what a palette is where you have like, let's say a uh, number of different colors. Like, let, you'll say maybe you have five colors mm -hmm. and you know, it's like a, a grayish pink and a grayish green and then a real dark version of that green, white and yellow. You know, there's completely weird, like why, what, you know, but then the cinematographer will only use that palette in this scene. Right. And then so like you might it might be like it's it's in a volcano and that's why it has this kind of darkish thing. And the little yeah, bit yeah, of the yeah. little the, the, the bright yellow is the light reflection off the lava on the uh -huh. actor's skin or something. And yeah, like, yeah, yeah. bang, the scene is so freaking gorgeous because <laughs> the color, you know. Um yeah, yeah. I get a question here from my, my buddy in Spain. He says, Have you read the revolutionary phenotype by JF? Uh, I have not. Um, if you, I would love to hear. I uh, yeah, I've not heard of that uh, myself either. But um, but yeah, I remember doing um, color studies of Frank Rosetta's work. And if you uh, if you're studying concept art or uh, wanting to learn mm -hmm. how to paint digital mm -hmm. art or anything, master mm -hmm. studies are really great. Especially study from the masters and. Um, when you start to mimic their brush strokes and think, oh, what color did he use here? And you start playing mm -hmm. with the palette and that you start to understand and learn color theory. It's almost like learning mm -hmm. color theory in reverse. You think you, you get to understand the choices that they made. You yep. get to understand why they made this key decision. You think, ah, it's got this color in because it's bouncing off of this and it's influencing yeah. this. Or yeah. Yeah. they've got this color in here to contrast with that. And, you know, right. Right. It, it really helps you to build up a um, a solid understanding of, of how to use color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know what, theory, um, obviously you're an art teacher. Yeah. You'll know that um, that really understanding the fundamentals of art is really what separates those that can create great art and those that can't. And yeah. so um, that's really going to be the difference with those that can use utilize the AI tools and those that mm -hmm. can't. I think you just owned the whole topic right there. You just put it all in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, that's a, that, I can't, I couldn't say it better. I think you, you just nailed it Thank pretty you. hard Thank right you. there. Um, wow. So now I'm like in awe of you. That was fantastic.
um, yeah, you know, and color has meaning too. So, like in this sure. piece here, in this piece here, we the theme of this show was essentially the the depopulation market. So how uh, I was I talked about how like in my town there's a uh, these three new buildings that just went up. One is a fast food restaurant. The other one is a smoke shop, and the third one is a wellness clinic. And I thought, that's right, perfect. okay, that's perfect. You, you 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 get stoned over here. You go eat your junk food over there, and when you get sick, you go to the clinic. You all in one little corner. How sweet! So <laughs> I I've been dealing with a lot of health issues, bad health issues. My brother, thank yeah, God, yeah. survived his very serious heart surgery. My uncle just well, passed away. Good. One of my best friends just today is going in for his first chemotherapy. My my wow. son's my son's mother is on her second bout of cancer, like. It's everywhere. It like, there's chemtrails mm -hmm. everywhere. There's I, there's shit in the water. It's everything is to kill us. And you know, and, oh come on, don't be a conspiracy theorist. It's it's a fact. It's just part of the depopulation program. They tell us, like they even tell us that they're doing it. It's not. They don't even yeah. hide it. You know. I, I heard so, a speech coming out with the WEF uh, representative okay. the other day, and it was. Okay. Yeah, uh, it's just disgusting, man. Like how yeah, they talk. Yeah, yeah like we're really just is. absolute. Uh, the arrogance of it and everything, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like they have the audacity to just say that they're willing to. They're about taking away human rights. Yeah, just plainly like that. We're going to take human rights away. Yeah, I know. Uh, it's like and crazy. Yeah, it's like the goal of it. And exactly. I think they think that we're so complicit now and dehumanized and demoralized yes, yes, that we're yes. like, okay, 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 just just give us our football and and, and cheeseburgers, <laughs> something and, like that. You know, yeah, uh, it's it. You're very. But right. that's the thing is, most people are like that. Okay, right. I don't care. Why do I care? I'm gonna be dead in ten years. You nailed it. You nailed it. I'm not gonna be around for that. <laughs> like. <laughs> the this is the the atomization of our people the the dumbing down of our people it's all there and like this is why i i post shit and i get people angry at me because i'm like you know fuck you you're the fucking loser you're the you're the you're the pussy you're the one that's letting this shit happen i mean we're all kind of you know it's letting it happen it's it's fucking being done to us but it, yeah, like, yeah 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 it, the more of are you are, are you standing up with the voice that's the main thing isn't it yeah. are you willing to speak out yeah and like nobody you know like I, you know i posted something recently <laughs> <laughs> in a certain area, a certain crowd. And I mean, I'm, I'm just openly saying like, I, you know, here's another thing for you to aggressively ignore, you know, and like, you know, or I'll, I'll just say like, you know, go football team, whatever the team is, mm -hmm. you know, to just be sarcastic to say like, you know, as your rights are being, you know, destroyed and your yeah, people yeah. are being replaced and all this like shit's going down. So anyway, it's not my job to make you comfortable. You you know, you're, you you understand kind of what I'm saying. And I'm, yeah, there's a bit of it that's just anger. You know, I I, I admit that. You know, there, there's maybe I, I should like rein it in a little bit in some cases. But overall, yeah. though, I just I just I feel like you know, screw it. If if we're that close to the end here, then. <laughs> You know, I mean, I'm not going to make them come. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, we, I think we have an obligation to tell the truth. There's just a comment yeah. in the chat here on a touch on from Hippocratic Code. Yeah. I think the story of Israel in the Bible is the story of the faithful, whenever, when, whether it's Enoch and the Noah before Israel existed or the Christians after the kingdom of Israel is long gone. Uh, okay, I'm not sure exactly. What is it alluding to? If he's on the same wavelength with with me in terms of uh, understanding, um, is you know Aryan Israel, area yeah, true Israel. I would say the uh, extension of uh, mm. the uh, true biblical Israel. Yeah, I think that's what he's alluding to. But I will say one thing though, on the uh, teaching that I I, uh, I kind of uh, learned the other day that the notion of um, Zion example sign the true notion of Zionism um mm -hmm. in the in uh in the, the christian concept of zion is mm -hmm. that paul the apostle speaks of um the holy mount zion which is a spiritual kingdom 
It's sure. a spiritual kingdom, a collective by which we come uh, to the kingdom through through Christ. He's, okay. he's seated on the mountain, Mount Zion, okay. and then the, the the notion of um, Jerusalem is a, is a a spiritual city, a, a spiritual Jerusalem by which we mm. come to the Father the, and God, okay. and um, and so this notion of Jerusalem has already kind of been um, brought about, manifested, but it's the it's it's like the 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 Zion that is uh being propagated now and even through the church with not understanding that mm -hmm. zion really is the spiritual zion by which we embrace god it's a spiritual kingdom okay so it's um, an allegory it's an allegory is essentially what, what you're saying yeah uh, well it no it's it's uh it's a uh a spirit it's not a, it, it's got it's it's taken it it says a, a kingdom has been forged mm -hmm. um and it's and it's a kingdom that cannot be shaken mm -hmm. so it's it's a kingdom that is birthed in the hearts of man it's a kingdom mm -hmm. uh, that is where god christ reigns in our hearts mm -hmm. through um our love and commitment to one another and mm -hmm. uh, and to the uh you know the uh adoration of god's laws and uh mm -hmm. you know all things natural and good and yeah. It's, this is like a uh, it's like a higher dimensional uh, plane it's not a metaphysical um, okay. uh, it's not a metaphysical uh, what's the word um, concept anymore so it is a okay. metaphysical concept rather than a physical place and so okay. what uh, Zionism is doing now is essentially antichrist by rejecting it as a um, as a you know a spiritual concept by mm -hmm. which people can come to uh to god through that as a kingdom mm -hmm. you know as a holy kingdom mm -hmm. um but it, you know it's it's kind of being it's 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 being preached as being this place in uh a physical place in the world a physical place yeah okay, okay. and so that's essentially the judaic uh you know jews interpretation of what uh -huh. Yeah, you know, sign well, Zionism right, is because they rejected Christ. So of course they yeah. don't embrace the the Christian essence of what um Zion is. Mm -hmm. Um and like I say, that that's that's where a lot of the Judeo Christians have kind of been fooled and they're convinced in believing mm -hmm. this narrative, mm -hmm. but it, it's mm -hmm. all geared towards the Jewish lens of perspective yeah. of Christianity. Right. right, right, right. They've they've positioned themselves very cleverly you know in in that way i think so um, yeah um the thing that <laughs> we, we our, our conversations go on very wild tangents the thing i was originally trying to say is that color has meaning so um it does a lot of things in the mood and you know the, the use of it and you know, to draw the eye around or something but like uh -huh. in america the dollar yeah. is green and so i'm using the green in this as a theme but with the green skulls has a sense of rotting you know what i'm saying and uh -huh. it has a pu yeah. putrid a putrid kind of smell to yeah, it. yeah so yeah 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 you got a dual sort of uh yeah dual meanings going on there dual meanings i thought you said jew meanings <laughs> no <laughs> dual dual no. <laughs> sorry the, my i gotta clean my ears out apparently um <laughs> But uh, anyway, yeah. So a lot going on in the world. So there you are. Yes, yeah, looking uh, looking really good. I like the depth you've got in there with the, uh, especially at the bottom there, the shading, the highlights mm -hmm. on the face. And right. So there's. Shadow. I mean, I'm I'm I'm. How do I say this? So for the process of making a work of art, you have to lay out the structure. It's the architecture of it the design you know the composition then i layer up some colors and like right now what i'm trying to do is add in some tone and give some shadow to this I, this needs to be more dramatic it's got to be darker in theme and feel okay um how graphic i want it to be i haven't decided yet because i always feel like my work is too graphic i like i want it to be more kind of uh visceral if that makes sense so um now some things need to be graphic in order to, to like you can't see 
you're losing the sense that these are dollar signs because it's it's kind of sketchy. So like I might need to go back in there maybe with a like a, a black marker and, and kind of like tighten that up a bit. I'm not quite sure yet how I'm going to do that. I'm thinking maybe okay. I'll put a highlight in in where there's the the star of uh, Rephraim. I forget the name of it. It's the the star of David is not actually there's no such thing in the Bible as the star of David. What's no, it no, called? it's What's the it uh, it's the star, star of Remphan, I think. Remphan, yeah. Remphan. No, Remphan is <clears> that <throat> kind of demon or devil or god or what is Remphan? Uh, it's linked to Moloch, uh, oh, I believe. Okay. I mean, I don't think they necessarily admit to that, but it's the only star uh, symbol in the Bible, really, uh, other than the sort of the morning star, which is uh, uh, referred um, to as Lucifer. But again, it's this oh. is linked. Okay. Um, but I, I think the um, I think that star in general is is sort of you know very sort of cabal uh, as okay. as above down below type thing. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's uh, all right. So anyway, uh, yeah, all I'm saying really is that that you know color has meaning too. That you can use it. Yeah, of course it does. You can use it in ways to create mood um, to. Uh, highlight things um they have these like for people in the uh concept art field they have these kind of um i guess they're sort of like templates where it'll be say a, a scene of a like a fantasy uh, moonscape you know with maybe some space stations on it or something and then you'll see the same image but colored 10 different ways you know with like mm -hmm. you know, here's here's where there's you know this is like yeah yeah warm and cool and is neutral there's uh you know uh tertiary colors which when you look at the what's it called the wheel the wheel of color what's that what do they call that color like wheel a, color wheel <laughs> okay <laughs> the wheel of color, color wheel. thank you for <laughs> translating for me I, I, what would i do without you uh it's been a while since i've been in a classroom Anyway, um, that that you know, you've got red, yellow, blue, and those are the primary yeah. colors. Red, yellow, mm -hmm. blue, and then next to that is purple, green, and orange. So purple, green, and orange are tertiary or secondary colors. Um, they they come from mixing, you know, red, yellow, and green, and that's it. That is your music scale for music or for rather for a color yeah. story. <laughs> um and so there's a lot well they are like musical notes though aren't they colors that's, that's like, what i was trying to say yeah that, that's yeah that's definitely a correspondence it's um, even um i tell you what i i used to go around my friends uh a fair bit and uh he's an amazing cook and uh yeah. whenever i go uh go catch up with him he'd normally do like a nice mm -hmm. meal in and uh i always said that he the way he cooks, it's like how I use color because mm. it's an experience. And um, he would always get the tastes. So there was almost like, he, I don't know, there was an order to his flavor. It was weird. Oh. But wow. He, he, wow. he cooked in a way that it was a very deliberate process uh, and everything complemented each other. The taste okay. complemented um, the, f the foods, which is very complementary to each other. And nice. it just nice. felt like... You know, he cooked how people paint. No, oh, that's amazing. That's I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll be over at his house tomorrow. In that case. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. So that that what you're saying reminds me of a friend who um, I've got a, a bunch of buddies that have a, a scotch night, and okay. it's like a little a little scotch drinking club. I don't I don't drink the way that I used to uh, for whatever no. reasons. But anyway, long story short is um, the one guy who runs it. They'll buy like $180 bottles of scotch. I mean, this stuff is not oh, a joke. It's and really just and, it. and the, so the dude who who does this, who kind of runs it, he lived in Scotland for a good while and and spent like a, a significant amount of time learning about it all. And so okay. he he it's it's really like a class, basically. Like he'll talk all about it, how it was made, where it was made blah 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 blah, blah. And, and i feel like so scottish <clears throat> when i when i'm you know i mean i am part scottish but I'll, i you know yeah, you get yeah. the idea it's a kind of a cultural yeah. experience and uh -huh. it feels really good and anyway the thing i'm getting to is that he'll describe the flavors of the scotch and how they change you know you'll you kind of 
aerate the the cup you know where you kind of like you know you get the the the, the bouquet of the scotch and then you know you, you the first thing you do is you put it you know, kind of let it touch your lips and kind of you know let it get in in your mouth and get the the first flavor mm. you swallow it and then you get the breath of air and then you get the secondary flavor from the breath of air and then a moment or two later you'll get even another one you know wow, then, like okay. now, after after tones or whatever there's a word for it you know and yeah like, okay this is kind of woodsy or this is sort of uh kind of cherry, has, has a cherry flavor or something like that. whatever I, I'm, huh. I'm, I'm being a jerk not being able to actually explain it in an eloquent eloquent way that my friend does but it's it's phenomenal it's it's just amazing yeah. there's a lot a lot of a lot of color palettes in there so mm -hmm. cool. yeah awesome well, yeah, yeah i mean i uh i do like a bit of uh whiskey now and again i don't really i i don't drink much anymore uh, my wife's not a big drinker and i tend to uh i, I don't i don't tend to drink much um mm -hmm. anymore but uh i do i do every now and again like a like like a typical whiskey yeah. uh, and I, I prefer it neat you know i don't like to water it down either with an ice cube okay. get diluted okay. flavor we've got this uh in in romania the uh, they they have this thing called soika um, okay. Some places are called Soika, some t some places are called Palinka. Depends What's where you go, of? but What's it made it's of? it's basically fermented plum, oh, and uh, okay. it's really tasty. Really I'm tasty. Sure I've had it. Um, yeah, I, I recently what a friend of mine. This wasn't that recent, but like before my health issues, I, I uh, we had a bottle of this stuff, and it was uh, something from okay. um, oh god, Kosovo or some some place. Okay. One of these sort of more obscure locations in in uh, in Eastern Europe, uh, Croatian right. it was Croatian. Croatian, it, okay, it, yeah, it, yeah. It, I think it was I think it was like maybe their version of of that drink. Um, very strong though. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Mm. I know Italians have uh, something. Uh, theirs is more aniseed based. Uh, I forget what it's called. Um, yes. Yeah, so. um, I don't know, but it's is uh, aniseed and it's a lot. It's quite sweet. It's more of an aperitif. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, um, yeah. yes, it's making me feel like a <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> so. This, this show is to, went from art to like uh, whiskeys and alcohol, and stuff. yeah. Do we have any other topics left? Um, we've gone up to one hour 23. Um, yeah, yeah I wanted to touch on that, mm -hmm. that that event today. I mean, we've talked about nationalist coping, we talked about a revolution, speech laws, we touched on that mm -hmm. briefly. Um, yeah. You know, we know what's really going on, but I wanted to touch on the the Sydney church attack. Did you hear about that? Oh God, I saw it just this morning on Twitter. So this is a yeah. popular popular Orthodox priest who has great you know videos. He he talks about the Jays and uh, blah blah blah. He's just a sort of a popular guy on out there. And he's in the middle of a mass, and some was it a Muslim guy? I, I, I heard. Well, yeah, I think he sh he shouted uh, Allah Akbar or something at the end, so I assume he is uh, definitely and he Muslim. Came right out of the audience, I mean, he, apparently he's just stabbing <laughs> this guy repeatedly. Yeah, yeah. I I, I, I saw the clip. Okay. I saw the clip, yeah. and uh, <clears throat> I'm a, uh, the guy's got a he's got a uh, recorder on. You know, so people can hear his voice and it's yeah. recorded and he does streams. Yeah. And yeah. so you can imagine that the knife picked up the sound. Sorry, the the the, um, the microphone oh. picked up the, the sound of this knife. That's and you can sick. hear it just shanking like. Oh, that's <laughs> evil. That's sick. And, <laughs> and so uh, you see him go down. But, you know, the people yeah. rush uh, oh, to yeah. help him. Oh, yeah. Uh, which yeah. is nice to see. And yeah, probably yeah. saved his life because it could oh, have been sure. a stab away from death. You know? I don't even. I, well, I don't know his current state. I mean, it, this son seems like it just happened. I don't know if he's even alive now. But I, I think he's apparently he's uh, he survived. Okay, there's um, one thing I saw is somebody. So like they apprehended the guy, and he's sort of like face down on like the whatever the whatever the the, the stage is that the that the priests do this on the altar. Yeah, and he's he's looking at the camera and he's smiling. He looks like he's stoned. And really, the I... yeah, the, the sickness of these people, how they love to kill us. 
They love, they love to, to stab and stab. They love to rape and they love it. So don't <laughs> fucking talk to me about fucking racism, bitch. Okay, these motherfuckers are evil and I don't give a fuck what they think or feel. You know, they're monsters. They're monsters. So like if you don't well, hate yeah, the this... things, we don't hate the things that are killing you, what good are you? What good are you? Mm. You must you must hate these things. You must stop these things. So it's you know, that's why this whole like, well, don't talk about such shut the fuck up. You know, go back in the kitchen. <laughs> like, it's like because that's all you are, you know, if you can't be, and I'm not saying be hateful about people who are not guilty, you know, but like, be honest about this shit. Like we're, we're, this is, this shit happens all the time. You, yeah, you know, yeah. all, it's, only, it's um, increasing, isn't it? And that's the thing are, though. They, 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 they're implementing these speech laws because they don't want people to talk about it. And it's like, I'm well, telling you. it's, I'm uh, telling you. Yeah. how else is it going to get fixed? <laughs> I, I know how else. Well, they, they clearly don't want it to get fixed. That's the thing, though, isn't it? So right. So no. I mean, try to. I mean, what is more sick and sociopathic than telling someone who's being murdered to shut up about being murdered? I mean, mm. in a, I mean, they, they. It's so dehumanizing. It's so demoralizing. And what it is is it's it's a type of a cultural terrorism. It's a socio-political terrorism that you know we're making quote hate speech laws that you can't talk about what happened. You can't say the truth. You know, a, a group of youth uh, uh, assaulted several people in a, in a mall today. Youth? You mean black youth? You know, oh, but, 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 but what does that have to do with it? You know. So yeah. I just I, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I can't take it anymore. You know, I'm I'm done, and I feel like. That's good in the sense that all the, the normie idiot loser sheep out there, they can just eat it. You know, they can just eat it. I'll I'll, I'll tell them the truth. I, I'll be careful how I say it, when I say it, you know, like in the case of like, you know, for some somebody who really needs uh, to be you know, kind of like eased into it or something. But I'm not going to lie. That's the thing. Uh, you know, I might not swear like I swear on this show. But like, I'm not gonna lie. I will not lie. You know, and it no, it has no. to happen. We. I think. I think. Ones. Yeah. I think we've got an obligation to tell the truth, haven't you we? Nailed, and, you nailed. Um, you just took the words out of my mouth. We. If you're in this movement and you're not doing some kind of work like that, you're not in the movement. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. True. Like you, true. Yeah. I'm granted. I got huffy and angry about this stuff. Like I. I mean, I'm justified in that, but. You know, and I apologize for, for blowing my, you know, saying some naughty words <laughs> and stuff. But hey, come on, man. You know, the fucking people are getting killed, you know? Yeah. No, it is. It's, it's inevitable. Um, this these Our politicians have really failed us. They hate us just as much. I think from the conversations that they even have about us when we're actually expressing our concerns, the sure. disdain, the, the sort of the uh, dismissiveness yeah. of their tone, towards us yeah. and um and the police are just there doing the bidding of them they, they, they are the foot soldiers of the new world order and if there's any police officer listening to this now or are, are out there uh mm -hmm. you know kind of spying or trying to uh gauge yeah, yeah, yeah. certain yeah. words that we're saying and this and that <laughs> you're you listen you, the, you know if people are here trying to Trip, Dude, trip us up or whatever it's crazy um you are you you are part of the problem um and that sounds really cliche um but you you guys are essentially the yeah. uh you know the foot soldiers of uh, the new world order which exactly. is an evil antichrist yeah. demonic yep. um sick twisted yeah and wrong kind of history it. place to be so and they, and you know assess assess you know who you stand for do you stand for right yeah. Do you yeah and and um and turn it around turn it around and actually yeah. fight for humanity um mm -hmm. because globalization globalism isn't fighting for humanity it's a sure path to end humanity in yeah. as we know it as our ancestors knew it um yeah. so can you imagine how pathetic your life is to to sit around sneaking on people listening to what they're saying and then reporting it to a tyrannical government that is allowing people to like in, not allowing but paying for and facilitating 
people to come into your country so that they can continue to murder, rob, rape you. You know, but like, oh, I'm watching this guy's channel to see that he, he doesn't say a bad word or that he blah, 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 blah. Like, yeah, no, 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 I, I mean, if, if, you know, how are you going to answer to God for that? <laughs> but most of them don't believe in God, and that's why they, uh, right. they're, they're doing they're, it. They, they're sociopaths. Yeah. 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 You can't it's... do that work and be a normal human being. You know, you have to be some kind of narcissistic, power hungry wacko. You know, yeah. Well, most people believe they're doing good as well, don't they? I think they, uh, they believe they're doing you know, if If uh, you were doing force for good, if, if, if these types of people were doing legitimate you know, uh, whatever work that they do to, you know, shut down criminal syndicates. You know, I mean, they should be listening in on the phone calls of the terrorists and the drug lords and the human traffickers, <laughs> not not us, you know? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, just talking here? about people that hate us and, uh, yeah, you know... And color and, theory. And so, yeah. yeah and <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, talk enough. about a waste of taxpayer money, you know? I don't know. It's madness. So yeah, this. Um, I mean, I've I've watched a few of his videos before, and I mean, he's a Syrian as well. I mean, he, he he's okay. fairly fair skinned, but he's not yeah. of a, a Western branch. And so okay. here we are, uh, yeah. kind of talking in favor for him. So what? Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, yeah, we yeah. Uh, we we stand for people that stand for what is good and what is right. Easily, um, easily. And most of the time. It always seems to be the same usual suspects that um, of course, of course, that are opposed to us, and they always tend to be the ones that are uh, <clears throat> pushing the uh, the degeneracy, pushing the sort of the anti godly narrative and yeah. the things which uh, are the enemy of of, of mankind, really. The hundred percent, hundred percent. Trying to turn, yeah. So this this I want, I've been wanting to segue into one more topic if we can squeeze it in. Um, so Trump came out with uh, some kind of statement saying that, you know, if I'm elected, we're going to have I, I'm going to start pushing for civil rights for white people, that there will be white okay. rights. And, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. you know, OK, here's the news story. OK, fine. So I actually did a little. um AI research, you know, so I'm now, you know, that AI is not, you know, it's not like our guy or something It's, but at the same time, it does tend to just give general information about stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And no, so, I, I utilize it in some ways like that as well. All right. So I was, I got a pretty decent answer. It wasn't like politically biased or whatever. And it just straight up said like one of the things like it's believed one of the reasons why Trump is pushing for white rights is because the lawfare that he's going through where they're they're trying to like get him off the ballots and they're trying to basically come up with fake cases in which to like steal his money you know and, and oh really it's, it's called lawfare like warfare but the use of the courts and uh, that's, okay yeah 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 that's to steal common. his money yeah it's very common in america anyway sickening sickeningly enough but Long story short is that he there's a, a black female judge who just says like black female stuff if you if you know what I mean, and she's just racially targeting profiling him and he's like you know what you're this is racial discrimination on the basis of me being white, so like this is that you know it's said that that's maybe one of his reasons, but I mean okay he's, he's so by proxy he's kind of our guy because he's sort of suffering the same fate and yeah. so by helping himself he indirectly helps us is in, that, is in, that what in, you're trying in, to get away in in part so like it, he has talked about it several times on his like speeches you know he, he does his famous speeches and stuff and he's yeah. gone into pretty good detail about it so it okay. i mean how much of it happens and when it happens if it happens how you know we don't know all that but it's a good thing you cannot you know you can't deny it. it is a good thing and it's understood like this is what the ai was saying that included in this policy is defunding critical race theory defunding diversity equity inclusion that would radically change the political social cultural landscape of all universities and all corporations 
And then yeah, yeah, give yeah. people like me the right to go and take a corporation or a college to, to court for millions of yeah, dollars yeah. for discrimination. Was you forced out then of your of your role? Would you say you were forced out? Um, I so throughout my life, I've had various forms of anti-white discrimination, uh, you know, in different times and places to different mm -hmm. degrees. And they were almost all done by white liberal feminists. So right. I, have like a yeah, pretty, yeah, yeah. I have like a pretty hardcore, you know, I don't know, I don't know say anything about that, but like, you know, I like these, that's the target demographic mm -hmm. that really go, goes after people like me. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I'm well, I straight. Agree. You're a straight white male. Oh, no. No, <laughs> no guys. You're yeah. privileged. Shut him down. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in, in other like, so, you know, let's say when I left the teaching profession, I left for many reasons. And obviously, you know, being a straight white male was the, the central reason of all those other reasons. Um, but there was no, how do I say, like, I didn't have any knowledge of this and this is back in like 2013 so there was not even a, a you know any general knowledge of such things whereas now it's just the norm of life and even i saw something about people who make movies on netflix and such and somebody asked like hey why do you always make the white guy the, the killer or the bad guy or what what do you, why do, you yeah, do that yeah. And the producers said because they're the only demographic that can that are not protected by law as a race. Therefore, wow. like if, if we made you know like the bad guy was the serial killer in this movie, we'd have the NAACP after us. We'd have that Bill so, Black Lives Lives, wow. and they would sue us so, for hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah, yeah. And they do it. They, so, this is how they make their money. I mean, they're scammers. They're freaking hustlers. They know what they're doing. So then, um. Really, that that from if, if that's understood by you know directors and whatnot, then yeah. then this uh, bill that that Trump's trying to pass, as you said, yes. is actually yeah. massive, like it's, really big. It's gargantuan. It, it it could completely shift everything in, into our our favor, you know. And I I mean, our guys could be coming millionaires by suing the shit out of like netflix and anything else that you can imagine yeah yeah you know, especially that... like look at how they've tried to rewrite our, our history and stuff and oh, uh, this is <laughs> completely fake even the bbc yeah. would go yeah. down i don't know why we still pay a, a tax oh, to that God. place they've been oh, my God. looking to uh demonize us for like for yeah. like decades now yeah I, I, and then you get like these so-called anthropologists that are like the first britons were black <laughs> Yeah, mind. no, Cheddar Man, and it's like skewed science data, and it's out of your. I mean, yeah. it, it's to me. I think like it's sort of. I don't know, like the Emperor's New Clothes. Like everybody knows it's a lie, but nobody says. Yeah, it's yeah, a lie. true. Yeah, my friend uh, has often used that term. Well, it's just, uh, it's yeah. quite a good one. If you don't know the story, the Emperor's New Clothes, and yeah. so it's a good story for you, you know, the kids, yeah. I guess. Yeah, that'd be something to look Morals. at. Morals. Yeah. Yes, indeed, indeed. Yeah, very um, interesting. Uh, some good tips. Oh, the the work you're doing looks beautiful. I, I That blue is very interesting. What are you going to do with that? Um, I'll show you. I made a quick mistake. Uh, but th this is this is a, one of the processes I use for adding shadow. One, mm. of, one of my go-to approaches is to do the block color it's one of the concept art methods I, uh, I learned years ago. So I just okay. do you a sample blocking color off the line work. And then I create my shadows where I think the shadows are. It's not perfect. This is like just a, a really rough approach. And mm -hmm. I used to usually use a blue because for a start, if you're doing shadows and you're thinking shadows are black, then <laughs> you got you got something to learn. Mm -hmm. Shadows are never black. They're usually always complementary to the <laughs> tone of the rest of the piece. So... If you yeah. have a warm atmosphere, you'll have a cool shadow. So if it's like reddish, mm -hmm. orangish hues, then the shadows are going to be blue and cool. And mm -hmm. vice versa, if it's cool and, uh, you know, the, the rest of the image is cool, blues and stuff, you'll tend to try and use uh, warm shadows. It's just mm -hmm. to be complementary. And then mm -hmm. I do it in block color, and then I bring the opacity down and then play with the filters a little bit. And then just mm -hmm. a bit of a self-discovery with the layers and think 
what works best usually mm -hmm. soft light uh is good um mm -hmm. and that, that kind of works difference maybe i don't know and i just play around mm -hmm. until uh yeah i get yeah. something that i like um and then so yeah what looks the best that looks okay um yeah that looks fine actually this the blue's gone on that hmm. um yeah maybe something like that that's nice enough but then i'll do uh the opposite and start putting in highlights where mm -hmm. light tends to catch most uh most likely so you've got a bit of light here uh Bit of light there for example and i'm just doing this very rough okay don't use that um oh i lost your your image very huh. um hmm. one second did you lose your screen did you turn your screen off? Um, I, i'm not seeing it on my end oh there it is I just oh we're here, we're here yes back i, I just got it back it's yeah fine. and uh <laughs> So it's just a very quick example of how I put in the, the shadows in the opposite way. Okay. Uh, and I do this for various parts of the image, which tend to catch the light. And then, uh, again, play with that layers. Uh, sometimes you might not need a filter. Uh, mm -hmm. And, uh, and yeah, and then and it kind of just gives that lift. And then a few of the little bits, uh, some of the touches, and, and then we're there. Okay. And there you go. Well, um, yeah. What do, you, what do you think, buddy? We're getting there. It's one hour forty-two. Uh, let's have a look yeah. at yours. Yeah, that's really cool. I mean, I like the depth in the shadows of uh, standing over. It's uh, yeah, motive. Um, I'm trying to develop the characters more to give them more emotion. Um, yeah, this, yeah. This, this, I really like. The yeah, idea I like the skulls. Yeah, I I I want to make them a little more sophisticated. Right now, I'm just kind of goofing around with with the tones mm -hmm. and stuff. I, they're a bit on the messy side. I'd probably clean them up a bit. Um, I'm thinking the eye um, in the center maybe would be yellow. That it would like kind of pop out and and stand out because the generally we're using very cool colors and neutral colors in here. I am not we, but you get the idea. Yeah, that, yeah, like, yeah. That yellow would would bang. You know, would pop right out. So. Yes, yeah, it's, it's uh very striking. That's for sure. I like the composition. Um, Thanks. Yeah, it's it's very uh well, very motive. Very good, very good. Well, I want to thank everybody for joining us today and interesting commentary in the chat. Good information. Um, I think we'll probably do. I don't know. Maybe next week we'll continue with this. We have a couple other pieces to wrap up. I think. Um, but uh. Any any final words there, big guy? Uh, let me see. Don't, uh, don't be racist. No, I think yeah. Don't be racist. Don't, <laughs> don't be. be racist. Uh, don't watch what you say. All the uh, laws coming out, which uh, try and trip you up. Um, but yeah, no, it's been a good good stream. Thanks for everyone to, uh, who tuned in. Um, and I quite enjoy these jam sessions where we just uh, finish off old works and just chat on some topical things. Uh, so uh, next week we'll probably have a new a new topic and um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, it'll be good. Um, and also uh, this 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 piece in particular is a uh, kind of finalizing the work from last week's show, which was help a brother out. And um, mm -hmm. I know we've uh, Donald's alluded to some things, personal things in his life, and we've got an active campaign uh, going on right now to help him out. Um, we said we'd push it uh this week or the week just gone um but we're, we're still making some final decisions on where to post it from and so on but um that's going to come out soon and like i say uh all the details will be there but it's like a collective art commission that we're doing so for a small donation um it will contribute to uh, helping donald out in a situation and both of us are going to uh, choose some some winners so you submit a donation and an idea of what kind of art piece you want uh, to see created and uh you know we'll uh create some of the winning entries and uh send them out to you guys so yeah it's like a uh you know it's a charitable thing to really help a brother out but also it's fun and uh it's a bit of a contest as well competition mm -hmm. so um 
Yeah. And I, I want to jump in real fast, first of all, to, to thank you for, you know, for doing this, for putting this together for me. That's extremely kind and, and I, I'm deeply grateful. Um, but also that the concept of it whereby we create artwork to... Is that a self-portrait, by the way? Yeah, actually it is. Yeah. yeah oh, okay. Interesting. I mean, that's many years ago, but it's I re I really like that portrait a lot, though. But that's anyway... Cool one, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, what am I really good. So the, the concept of doing a kind of an art auction where, you know, I can give back is what I'm saying. I'm just happy that and, and when mm -hmm. other people in our, our movements are in some trouble and need some help, we can do these little art auctions. So it's not just about me or for me, but it's allowing me to use my skills to help, you know, create uh, crowdfunders for people that are in trouble and need some help with, you know, whatever. Yeah. And there you go. And here's my book. Oh, so, if you get, yeah, you can you, you can grab a copy of my book at uh, my website. It's, it's some really good link. stuff there. Like really good. Yeah. Yeah. It's Do you find that you've had 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 spells where you've been stronger, uh, a stronger drawer than other times? Like when you've been more consistent, you're really on it and very efficient with your uh, drawings. And then, you know, or have you noticed improvements throughout the years or? Where would you say has been your kind of best era for for art pieces? God, dude, this is now you, 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 that's the start of a whole new show, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, maybe no, we'll discuss I, that I, next I, week then. We'll maybe maybe we'll. Uh, next week, <laughs> our topic chat topics don't seem to be. My uh, mic's really loud. My chat topics. Uh, yeah, I'm hitting the red a lot. I shouldn't be doing that. Um, yeah, the art topics don't seem to be so popular on the streams. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm -mm. anyway well we'll get to it soon enough anyway god bless you yeah guys. yeah love all right you. take care guys don't be racist and have a great day bye-bye <laughs> see you